Former presidential candidate Dr. Ben Carson is with us now from West Palm Beach, Florida. Dr. Carson, I want to go back to this question of immigration and Donald Trump's position on it because politicians who have changed their position on immigration are responsible for a lot of the unhappiness in the base of the Republican Party. What do you what do you make of where Donald Trump is on immigration and this question of the 11 million undocumented workers? Well, I think basically what he is saying is, you know, there's there's no path to citizenship, uh, there's no voting unless you go through the same processes that anybody else goes through. Uh, he's saying that he clearly wants to secure the border, uh, put e-verify in place, mm -hmm. you know, tend to the visa situation, do all those things. But he's saying, let's apply the law, the Constitution. These things have not been tried by Democrats or Republicans, and then let's see what's left over. And what's left over after that is something that should be dealt with in a reasonable, compassionate, and fair way. I don't think that's a big departure. All right, Dr. Carson, we'll hold off just a moment. We're going to be back with more from you, but we got to take a commercial break here. Stay with us. Welcome back to Face the Nation. I'm John Dickerson. We're back with more from former presidential candidate and current Donald Trump supporter, Dr. Ben Carson. Dr. Carson, I want to pick up where we left off on the question of immigration. You said Donald Trump wants to enforce the laws. So that logically leads to the conclusion that 11 million people who are in, a, in the country illegally enforcing the laws would mean getting them out. But when you press the campaign on that, then they say, well, that's what has to be worked out, which a lot of people who have been in this, paid attention to this issue for a while, hear as code. They think that's building a back door to ultimately not deport the 11 million who are in America and are undocumented. Well, it's not really code. It's using our heads, using common sense. You know, we have laws and regulations for a reason. We don't really know how they work because we simply haven't uh, been applying them, and that's both Democrats and Republicans. You know, it's, it's very much like your home. Uh, because somebody wants to come to your home, do you let them in? No, you want to know who they are. You want to know who they're, you know, if, if they're your son or your daughter's friend, you know, that you say, make sure that you understand who this person is. It's the same thing that we want to do now. We want to protect the American people, particularly at a time when we know that there are people out there who want to do harm to us. This is just common sense. But, and so I guess this is the last question. Do you have any uh, doubt that Donald Trump will begin, once he becomes president, deporting the 11 million who are in America uh, and are undocumented? Well, well certainly the, the individuals uh, who have committed crimes, who keep coming back, and who ICE demands be let loose into our communities, those people will no longer be uh, bothering Americans. We will not have sanctuary cities, and we will begin to do things that make sense. This should be something that could, appeals to all Americans. As far as I'm concerned, it should not be a partisan issue. We're talking about our safety and our security for ourselves and for our progeny. Let me switch topics now. Uh, Donald Trump had some harsh words for Hillary Clinton this week. He called her a bigot. You suggested he not use that word. Why? Well, uh, in one of the left-wing uh, publications, I was asked about that, and I said, you know, the, the use of, of, of terminology, the racist, the bigots, all of these kinds of things are detracting from the real things that we need to be talking about. Of course, they just said, Carson says, you know, Trump shouldn't use this word. But, uh, you know, I, I think people are getting sophisticated enough to read through uh, the lines now and understand that the issues that face America are, are gigantic and they're going to have a big impact. And this election is so vitally important because it's two completely different philosophies. One says, let's take the pie and redivide it and equitably redistribute it. And one says, let's make lots of pies and let's grow this thing tremendously. You know, these are very different philosophies. And there are those who don't want to talk about the issues. They want to pick on these little words that people say so we can divert attention away. Let's talk about the issues. This is vitally important. And everybody should be proud of their positions. Don't try to hide your positions and deceive people into thinking something else. Fair enough. But, but um, the word bigot means something very specific to people. And it goes to what the candidate, the head of the Democratic Party, has in her heart. And therefore, if she is a bigot at heart, then anything she says about those issues is uh, discounted. So this isn't just a kind of 
side word, this goes to the heart of her motivations about a whole set of policies that he's saying. So is it wise to just pass it by when this is the, the being uh, the, the charge being made against her? Well, well, well it, it's, it's not wise to engage in a name calling at all. You know, Hillary Clinton is calling him a racist, trying to associate him with the Ku Klux Klan. But where did the Ku Klux Klan come from? It came from the Democratic Party. Who was the party of slavery? Who was the party of Jim Crow and discrimination? Who was the party that pushed through the civil rights? Uh, legislation and voting rights. That was the Republicans. who They were established as an abolitionist party. And the Democrats come along and say, yeah, yeah, I know. But it all switched. And the Democrats became the Republicans, and the Republicans became the Democrat. What a total lie. There's no, no evidence of that whatsoever. A small group of people. It's still going on, still manipulating, still using, still lying. You know. Do, do we want to talk about that? Yes, we do want to talk about it to some degree, but we really need to talk about the issues that affect the quality of life of our children. That is so important. Twenty trillion dollars in debt. What is that going to do to them? You know, why don't me, we talk about these things? Let me ask about the pitch that Donald Trump made to the African American community in his speech. He said, and this is Donald Trump saying, what do you have to lose by trying something new like Donald Trump? You live in poverty. Your schools are no good. You have no jobs. 58% of your youth is unemployed. What the hell do you have to lose? Uh, what do you make it? What do you think of that pitch and how it'll be received? Well, again, you want to listen to what is being said. He's talking about uh, the progressive movement and their ruling in the major cities of our nation. What has that led to in the last 30, 40, 50 years? More poverty more incarceration, broken homes, out of wedlock births, you know, high school dropouts. I mean, how, how is that a success? And why do we want to continue that? We need to look at something else. And you're going to hear coming from the Republicans, which I admit they have been late to the game. We should have been into this a long time ago because the, the policies that have been espoused are good policies, but they've not been expressed in a way that, that people are going to, to understand them or even listen to them. And Donald Trump is starting that. And of course, that's why he's being attacked. Because, you know, you're not supposed to attack the sacred cow. This is our, these are our people. These are our voting bloc. Don't you dare come in here and start talking to them. But I got news for them. A lot of people in the black community are very, very intelligent. And they're going to be listening very carefully to what's being said by both sides. And they're going to be making intelligent decisions. Let me ask you a last question. Based on your medical expertise, you've mentioned that both candidates should release their medical records. As a doctor, what do you make of some people and other doctors diagnosing candidates kind of on television and from the sidelines? Is that something that should be done? Well, of course not. You know, we, we like to use real data. Uh, but I think one of the ways to eliminate that kind of speculation is for both candidates to release their medical records. You know, as people get older, a lot of things begin to go wrong with their bodies. And I think the American people have a right to know, because we're dealing with two older candidates, what their health status is, because it's a very intense job. It's not you know, eight hours a day, it's 24 seven with constant stress. We need to know that we have a leader who can withstand that. Have you made that case privately to Mr. Trump, who you're in communication with? Uh, I have talked to him about uh, the health records and the health concerns this week. I think he's perfectly willing to release that information as long as she releases hers as well. All right, Dr. Ben Carson, thanks so much for being with us and we'll be right back.